Hello there, my name is Sudafes and welcome to the Targus cast. And I'm not alone here. Yes, I am also there. I am the game mob. Targus stands for Talk about games and random stuff. That's right, so let's just get started. We thought that we will start off with something that we're gonna talk about, games that we are waiting for. And uh, who of us should start? Me? <laughs> if you want. Okay, a game that I really want uh, to play right now is actually Far Cry 4. I played Far Cry 3 and I was so excited of this game and I just can't wait to play Far Cry 4. You heard about the game? Yeah, who does not? With the weird, actually many people think he's gay dictator <laughs> who's a friend of the main <laughs> character and the main character is like, oh fuck, it's him. <laughs> it's everything I know about the game from the Ubisoft press conference from the E3 from 2014. Why, sh why should he be gay? <laughs> no, people think he might be gay. <laughs> Because he's wearing a weird outfit and it's like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't oh know. God, I don't think. This chewing gum isn't uh, strawberry flavored. <laughs> Actually, I think Ubisoft has planned this. So, wait, 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 wait. So you think they want people to think that he is actually gay? <laughs> now, uh, I think it's a little bit like some facets, some parts of the oh, character some parts of are, the little character. Bit <laughs> are a little bit misleading. So, I don't know. Or he's a hipster or something, I don't know. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I'm offending so much people with <laughs> this. Hmm. No, but really, I just can't wait to play Far Cry 4. I don't know if you know about it. Have you played Far Cry 3? Yes, actually I have. Short? Ah, uh, you know the crocodile or sharks that you can met there? Yes. When you are in the water, I remember this first time I played this, I didn't knew about that. I walked into the water, I didn't expect anything, I was just happy with my life. And then, suddenly, it just came something there, I just, get the fuck, I just shit, shit in my pants. Seriously, I didn't expect anything to come up. <laughs> A white crocodile appears, he used tackle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my, my god. god. Horrible. No, but yeah. seriously, I think Far Cry 4 is gonna be awesome. That's one thing that I really want to play. Do you have any game? Yes, I have one. It's Guilty Gear Xart Sign. It's a Japanese beat em up fighting game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know about The Guilty Gear series is a little bit like I have to compare it with it. Street Fighter. It's a anime style fighting game series and it's so fucking smooth. The gameplay is so smooth. It's fast. It's not totally unplayable like Blast Blue from the same company. It was a little bit. You only make an attack if you know the special moves and it's weird. I will import the Japanese version and I'm so waiting for it and I want to play it. I know actually that you told, I mean, I have seen a video on YouTube that you sent it to me and I think the game has pretty much of Super Street Fighter Arcade Edition because of Arcade Edition is not that smooth as what Guilty seems to be. Yeah, uh, Street Fighter has a different speed with attacks, counter attacks, it's totally complicated to explain. Different games have a different move patterns from characters, like for example Tech. There's a little bit of delay between the point you make the attack and uh, actually attack and combo happen. I'm not so big of a Tekken fan except for the 3DS Tekken. For the Nintendo 3DS it's actually nice. But Guilty Gears I have played the most games I actually have are two of the series and there are more games. <laughs> but the last one was released on Wii but not in Germany I think. And there was the DS part and the DS game uh, for the Nintendo DS was absolutely shit. And uh, Guilty Gear Isuka, which was ported for PC, was a little bit weird because you have to press a button to uh, rotate the character. It was a little bit weird, but not unplayable. But the new game seems to be a little bit like the 
2x reloaded. What is, is my favorite fighting game? Yeah. <laughs> Complicated stuff. <laughs> okay, but there are, I'm thinking about if there is more game that I want to come out. Should I say another one? Yeah, or? sure. And give you time to think about something. I'm totally waiting for The Witcher 3. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I have played, I'm sorry, but I played The Witcher 2 and I love the game. It's awesome. I mean, yeah, I really want to the third game to come. Yeah, it was like, oh, third game, hmm. It's pre-ordered and it's weird because I don't pre-order games anymore. It's not like that. I just love it because you can sleep with every fucking woman there, but it's it's just awesome. <laughs> you can't sleep with every woman, but with many. <laughs> it's important. That's the reason why it got a nickname from a German gaming show, which no longer exists, called Giga Games. And they called the First Witcher game, The Bitcher. <laughs> Actually fits kind of, but it's, it was a thing. Everybody was like, oh, you can sleep with many women. And I was like, yeah, but that's not the main point. You you actually don't have to sleep with anybody. And this is a little bit well done. It's not like Mass Effect 1 where you shut up and sleep with me. Not, not a joke. <laughs> it's actually a dialogue option in the game. At some point, I was like, what? I seen a video and there was a dialogue tree and then like, how are we going to die? As the womb says, and he's like as a shepherd, um, as a, the main character. If you choose a male main character, I don't know if the first game has a female counterpart, but it was like, shut up, Steve, with me. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Weird. Maybe I can talk about a game that I really want to have, but I... For, for a reason I can't have it yet it's actually The Evil Within and it's only for Ooh. the PS4 and I and I don't have a PS4 It's that's the problem wait a second The Evil Within has a PC release really? yeah didn't you notice? The Evil Within is a multi-platform game do you mean the new game from Shinji Mikami a uh, horror game in Japan called Psycho Break with this cop and yeah, with this cop. You can play the demo of The Evil Within via Steam, the first three chapters. I don't know how much this is, but... Yeah, um, I'm talking about the entire game and not just a part of it. No, but it has a PC version and the German version is, if you're using the German version or whatever version, is uncut. But uh, I just have a question. Yeah. Is there any differences between the PC version compared to the PlayStation version? You mean like an exclusive, uh, ex ex <laughs> huh? exclusive pair of shoes you can put on in the game? I don't know, actually. Well, oh, you noted something. This hair. I'm. This hair has hmm? been going on for about 10 minutes now, and it just feels like one minute. I don't know how, but okay. Rambling. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, let's move on to something else. Or did you have any more game that you want to come? I was actually uh, looking up if there are difference between the Evil Within PS4 version, but I don't have seen something very special about it. Ah, uh, but I am actually a guy who really, really loves horror games. But uh, I don't know if you maybe are in the same situation as me, but <laughs> I just feel like it's unnecessary to play horror games when it's all dark on my own, when I'm not recording. I think like horror games are something for Let's Plays, for YouTube, but why should you give yourself a heart attack when nobody's watching? <laughs> I really like horror games because yeah, it's actually I want to play it for myself. I don't let's play them this often. I don't know if I have actually played a horror yeah, game. Yeah, but I know was, uh, some pretty cool horror games. Outlast. Well, I'm gonna pl let's play it. I mean, I I want to have the game, and I'm freaking near to buy this game. Slender, I have let's played, but uh, well, everyone knows about Slender. I mean, this is not really a great game anymore. Amnesia. I don't know. It seems pretty boring to watch, but it's super scary to play. Then I know about, I mean, I know about a lot of games, but my favorite horror game that I ever played is Upskur, I guess. It's a game you can buy on Steam, Upskur. You can play it. 
You can play it with two persons. I mean, we can play it through the first chapter, then you can have a friend that can play with you if he has a game controller. That's just awesome. Then you are then you can make a let's play. I think I'm gonna make a let's play with Niels because it's, I think it's pretty hard to make a let's play with you. If I could, then I would do it. But the problem is just you're living in another country than me. <laughs> not to speak of problem, but I don't have the game on Steam. I have it with a, a PC. Uh, it's not that I mean. I mean, you need to come here so you can have a controller plugged into my PC and then you can play. It's not that I mean online. You should buy or you should try the Evil Within on PC. It looks better and there isn't a difference in the versions. The Evil Within is released on PS3, PS4, PC, Xbox 360, Xbox One. What the fuck? Okay, that gives me the chance to actually talk about another thing. If you had the choice between... I know that you got a PS1 and I also got that, but uh, if you had get the choice to buy now, I mean, as it looks now, would you buy uh, Xbox 360, Xbox One, X, uh, PlayStation 2, 3 or 4? What would you recommend to buy? Oh, if you uh, want an extended... Uh, yeah, if it's, it's hard. What was this? Hmm, weird. It was my cell phone, I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, okay. The point is every console has its good exclusive games. But actually, two weeks ago I bought a PlayStation 3. It was cheap, so yeah, why not? And because there is a lot of exclusive games I want to play. And the Xbox 360 doesn't have this much exclusive games that looks interesting to me, which doesn't has a PC port or something like this. But there are a lot of games for PlayStation 3, for example, who doesn't have an, a port to PC or whatever. Mm. For example, the Uncharted series, well, the first Uncharted has shitty controls, but still a funny game. <laughs> <laughs> so you, yeah. you would either buy an Xbox or a PlayStation? This depends on the problem with the next generation or the well now generation playstation 4 and xbox yeah, that's one what I mean. is there aren't this many good interesting it's just for me exclusive titles out so i'm like yeah why should i buy one of the two consoles there is nothing i was waiting for at the moment and if i would have to choose at this point between the two consoles I would choose the PlayStation 4. Well, in my opinion, uh, if I could talk now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, sure. In my opinion, I would also pick the PS4 right now. But I don't know how it is in the future. Maybe be some awesome game for the Xbox One. But right now, I would buy the PS4 because of the games. I mean, The Evil Within, Alien Isolation, Destiny, Watch Dogs. Yeah. Well, you, these are all titles you have on the Xbox One also. So, hmm. Well, um uh, the the quality seems to be better on the PS4, and that's not everything. I like the touchpad on the controller. Yeah, okay. There's one thing: if you have an, you don't have to have a new PC to have better quality in games. And this is something I was like, the I have a colleague at work, and he was like, "Yeah, I have a PS4," and I was like. Yeah, what have you played on the PS4? And he was like, Assassin's Creed 4. And I was, <laughs> haven't you a good PC? Yes. Why well, you don't play it on PC? You have better graphics. Oh. <laughs> the Assassin's Creed games are pretty incredible. The controls of the Assassin's Creed game on the PC is pretty hard to control, if you know that. Use a Xbox 360 gamepad or connect your well... uh, PlayStation gamepad to PC. I know this is pretty lazy, but I just only got a wireless Xbox 360 controller and I'm just too lazy to buy one with a USB cable. So uh, <laughs> you don't have to, that's the problem. You don't have to buy a USB cable. There is um, I know. Yeah, but it's hard to get uh, without a controller. It's annoying. Yeah, that's what I mean. The control uh, there is an, the control. I have to explain this shortly for people who no idea what I'm talking about. If you want to use any kind of Xbox 360 gamepad on your PC as a wireless gamepad, and wireless gamepad means 
guitar hero guitars guitar hero drums or for example also you have to have a receiver it's a small device with usb you have to have this to use uh, i this think they know your... what the receiver is yeah many people are like what do you mean for watching tv or whatever and buying this receiver without a controller is harder than to buy a actually controller with the receiver it's weird <laughs> you you pay uh, 20 euros in germany for the receiver but you pay 40 euros for the controller with a receiver weird <laughs> yeah that's, well we can t uh, talk in other thing now any suggestions uh, you know what i mean Wait, I just, so, <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you have any theme or should I make an... I have an idea. Okay. Or, what do you have? Uh, my idea was that we maybe can talk about our favorite games. This is a topic this will take a long time. Yeah, exactly, why not? I got time. Yeah, okay. I mean, why? it's only 23 and oh. for 48, it's all, it's almost the next day, but I don't even care about it. And for those who live in England, but I don't think I have that much watch it, but who cares about that? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, okay. I, 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 ah. <laughs> what the exactly. Fuck? This is what I was uh, about to say. No, it's 11.44 p.m. now. Yeah. Okay, for those who live in England. <laughs> okay, our favorite games. Who should start? You first. Ready? Okay. My favorite game I played back in the 90s, okay, <laughs> was actually Outlaws. Not Outlast, Outlaws. So this is a game which came out in 1997, but the quality on this game is not that great. It's a Western game where you play as a person called Marsha James Anderson whose daughter got kidnapped and his wife got killed while they also burn down their house. The goal of this game is actually to get through all the levels. I think there are nine levels, right? I Wait a minute. No, wasn't it more? No, I guess uh, the first, the secondary... The train, the other one in the cliffs, then the sauna, the mine, the... Well, I think it's nine levels. Anyway, who cares about that? <laughs> well, and the goal is to actually kill as much enemies. And at the end of every level, you meet a boss. And if you kill that boss, you can continue to the next level. In the last level, you are not able to actually kill uh, the the boss because it's actually your own daughter who kills the boss well it's hard to explain but i can leave a link in the description of the game the trailer you can watch it but my favorite game is it because it was my actually my first game that i ever played my first first person shooter i played in my life and it's just a great memory i don't know i don't think any game in my life can beat that i don't know if you know that about that feeling but it's just ah i know what you mean <laughs> but I can't actually remember what was my first video game. Hmm. <laughs> Trespasser on your YouTube channel. Yeah, I mean, uh, this was actually... Trespasser is actually a kind of a guilty pleasure, if you know what I mean with the word. Uh, guilty? Something you... Guilty pleasure means something you know it's not this good but you totally like it yeah that's exactly the thing that... or some something you like but you know you shouldn't like it something like this yeah now i know what i wanted to say uh, the game outlaws even though it came out 1997 the graphic wasn't even good uh, there i mean if you killed an enemy it's pretty funny it's like a 2d and 3d mixture because when you move around the enemies actually always follows you they're always looking at you like oh, what are you doing there right now no but they're it's pretty hard to explain uh, maybe you know what i mean can you explain it yeah uh, this game is a little bit the levels actually are 3d models but uh, every object like bottles enemies are 2d sprite and when you're uh, walking around the uh, enemies the sprite is rotating it's totally <laughs> looks weird when you're thinking of it now but back then it was like ah well standard and if you shoot or punch enemies you can punch enemies it's funny they fly in a high curve to the ground yeah but they 
I don't know if you have tried that, but I know in the second level, you can get a shotgun, a normal shotgun, and uh, have you tried to duck and shoot them? Then they're like flying 50 meters. It's just funny. Yeah. And the funny thing is, if you punch them, they're actually dying after one punch. <laughs> but I know a thing. I have actually tried it. I punched someone, then I had played for about 20 minutes, and then I went back to the same enemy, but he got up again, so he didn't die. Have you noticed that sometimes? Yeah, it's actually... I don't know if it's a glitch, or they wanted it to be so... I think, I mean, it's realistic. A anyway, I mean, if you punch someone, like, one time, they're not dying. <laughs> like... <a> well... <laughs> Depends on the punch. Yeah, okay. If there is like spikes coming out of the fist, then it's understandable enough. But I mean, mm. yeah. Well, Wolverine. You, you are able to have a fist, as I said. You are able to have a magnum. You're able to have a Winchester. It's a um, rifle. Yeah, pretty much. Then you're able to have a normal shotgun. Then you can have double shotgun, which has sword as a uh, sort of shotgun. Yeah, and then you have a normal double shotgun. You are able to have dynamite, which is pretty... It's pretty, actually pretty fun to play with dynamite in this game. You have... Uh, okay, I don't know. Nah, this here would take for too long if I would explain that. Then you have knives and uh, nothing. So you, <laughs> so you are able to have nine different weapons. Uh, okay, I don't know if you count the fist as a weapon, but I call... I count it because one punch killed someone. <laughs> okay. Well... Okay, I'm explaining it anyway. Uh, <clears throat> in the game, you have actually the option to turn on and off the uh, damage you take. If you So if you turn it off, then if there are enemies shooting at you, you're not taking any damage. I think it's for practice or anything. But the funny thing is, if you have that, then you can just set a dynamite on fire, throw it on the ground, and then when you sprint and jump at the same time, then you actually can uh, fly out of the map. And that's actually <laughs> pretty fun. Have you tried it sometimes? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit like rocket jumping in a UT, uh, where you aim for the ground and use the power of the explosion to get higher or to points where you actually can't get on normal ways. <laughs> oh my god, we have we have been recording for half an hour now. Yes. Hmm. Okay, you. Okay, now I should stop talking about my favorite game. What's yours? This is a question I really don't like to answer because it's so, um, you know, there are so many good games and there are so many shitty games. Ah, but um, yeah. if I would have to say where you have actually a feeling for it because you have played it years ago and you're like, ah, oh, this is, I like this game even when it's not so good. I actually have to choose Trespasser. It's a licensed game for the second Jurassic Park movie, The Lost World. And it's... <laughs> it when it was released it was totally ahead of its time so nobody could play it it's not a joke it was <laughs> released uh, a month before half-life one but it has completely working physics mind blown when i played it the first time i was like well dear show yay one frame another frame I, a third frame I, I... I saw your let's play of it, and I don't remember what it was, but you actually actually tried to throw a door in the water, and it look, just looks fucking funny. Okay. I mean, <laughs> the in, the, in the beginning, a game follows the well the adventures of a girl called Annie, or in the German version Anne, and she's she has a plane crash on the side B Isla Nubula, and. Uh, <laughs> The island from the second Jurassic Park movie. And you actually have to explore the island. And it's actually a little bit like an... Well, it's a, it's actually an action-adventure shooter game. It's hard to explain because you have weapons. You don't have a cursor in the middle of the screen. You have an arm. You actually rotate your arm and your hand and your arm and you have boobs. Yeah, that's the thing that every game needs to mm. have. But when I watched your Let's Play, I just couldn't stop laughing. When you walk, it looks like you are short as fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit weird because, well, it's you're playing a female character and they had to solve the problem with the 
where do you show how much damage your character is taking and when you look down you see your breasts uh, actually she's not naked or something she's wearing a kind of oh, a tank yeah. top or something Doesn't like this like... and and she has a heart tattoo and when you you take damage the tattoo is changing and it's actually kind of <laughs> cool but weird because the complete player model is boobs and an arm it's not a choke <laughs> <laughs> and you actually can move your arm and there's the game a uh, surgeon simulator and when i first was seeing this i was thinking like hey the control scheme from trespasser really <laughs> uh, have you ever seen the surgeon simulator where you actually you, you move i have the game you're moving your complete arm and you can rotate your arm and i don't actually know this much games where you are doing this well, hmm. baking simulator. <laughs> well, um, it's pretty much an exact copy of Surgeon Simulator, but better because it's a game that made in 24 hours. But back to Trespasser. I think the environment of Trespasser looks pretty great back then. When, when was the game made? When, when did it come out? It was 1998. It was actually a month before uh, Half-Life 1. And this is actually interesting because let's say you need a lot of processing power to actually play this game and no PC was able back then to do so. Is the game on a CD or on an old disc? You know what I mean? No, no, it's a CD game, a ah. CD only. You only get this game on a CD. Well, because of stuff. Yeah, I, re I remember the times <laughs> back then when their games was on the discs. I I have a game called Return to Sorg and it, uh, it has 12 diskettes. <clears throat> yeah, diskettes. Floppy disks? No, not floppy disks. The newer... Um, it's pretty much... I got a pretty cool game that came out in 1981. Yeah. But, okay, I wasn't living back then, but... <laughs> it's a game where you are in space and you are you are on a, on a spaceship that you are trying to kill other spaceships in the space. I don't know how to explain it better than that, but... This is actually a game that are on seven diskettes. What Whoa. the fuck? Uh, was this then on floppy disk, the bigger diskettes? Yeah, genau. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. What the fuck? Yeah, I have a game called Wizardry Gaming Compilation with seven, you know, eight games. One to seven and uh, Wizardry Gold. And the first Wizardry is from 1981. <laughs> and I was like, what? And it has 3D environment. Yeah. That I'm looks not... totally, uh, yeah. The, the space Lights. game that I talked about for just a few seconds ago, that came, also came out in 1981. I think I said that. But I now I'm just wondering, when did the first game on the world came out? It must have been something around 1930. What do you mean the first video game or... The first actual game, I mean, any game, any kind of game, anything. The, f uh, yeah, game, when, you, uh, you, you mean, uh, video game, not like, um, tabletop games. Yeah, yeah, or... yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, digital games. The first video game is actually not, uh, it, it, there are many debates about it, but many are thinking of, uh, the cutted ray tube amusement device from 1947. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's an early, yeah, you actually ha only have a kind of, um, you have an old tube where you can control it. It's actually a little bit weird to explain. And no, I mean, wow, 1937. My God, it's, that's old. <laughs> you know, there wasn't, where wasn't. Uh, in you know uh, exactly 1958 there is um, someone has made on a library PC or no not no it wasn't a PC yeah, what was this yeah. the game was called tennis for two ah, on a Donner model 30 analog computer it was actually pong <laughs> and pong <coughs> was released later and it is not, uh, it is well known now that Pong was just a copy of it. 
<laughs> and because Pong was released in 1972. And yeah, but well, Pong. I think many people will know Pong. <laughs> okay. Now to get away from your favorite question, what's your favorite game? I just got, I don't think, I don't know. Uh, should we talk about another question that I just get got into my mind? Or should we sure. stop the podcast? I mean, we have been recording about 40 minutes now. We can continue. All right. We have time. And Eight. I'm awake. <laughs> or, or not. No. That, that's great. Okay. What was the first operation system that you owned? Windows. Wait a, wait a minute. Okay. I have to think because... No, it was Windows 95. Right. That's and, mine. But in a weird special version. What? Yeah, it's actually funny. It was in the year 1997 <laughs> when my parents bought a PC used from, um, well, I don't know from who, and it was actually cheap for, uh, at this time. It was a Pentium 1 with 133 megahertz overclocked to 166 megahertz with 2.5 gigabyte hard drive. What? It was outstanding this time. Yeah, it was two hard drives. The one has one gigabyte. Are you, si are you kidding me right now? And the second one has 1.5 and it was much for this time. Wait, 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 wait. Now, now I just got a question. You said you had Windows 95 on a strange version. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, I, how, I, was how... I was coming to this. Wait, I, just a question. Uh, mm -hmm. How much space did you have on your hard drive in total? Uh, a hard drive total was 2.5 gigabytes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I was... Uh, today I was like, wait a minute. I have a um, 2 terabyte uh, it's like, hard drive. What the fuck? I mean, <laughs> I, I, yeah. when, I, when I record with the reps, I, I have been recording for 10 seconds. It's, it's over that. It has more than 2 gigabytes then. And a fun point about it was an um, Siemens Nixdorf PC. Yeah, it was actually called like this because it was an already ready made PC and stuff. You buy it and there was a um, display with it, an old monitor and CRT monitor, I think. Yeah, actually an old monitor with um, speakers attached to it. It was actually, yeah, useful. And the uh, monitor was well used many years and it worked fine, better than the PC. And there was a Windows 95 version with the PC and the PC, uh, this 95 version has a special desktop. It was weird because you actually had, an, there was a normal Windows desktop, but if you pushed a button, the graphic interface would open and the graphic interface looked like a desktop, not a joke. We actually had a desk with an uh, alarm clock on it and a PC and a CD player. And you actually could uh, access uh, programs over this interface. And it was actually like, well, like a point and click adventure a little bit because <laughs> clicking on the CD player, <laughs> hmm, CD uh, player opened. Clicking on the alarm clock, hey, the clock opened. <laughs> Clicking on whatever, whatever opened. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It was, it was a weird version. I don't know if this was standard or it was because of... It has a demo disc with it. It was weird, yeah. <laughs> well, weird. you were Finnish? I'm so old. Oh, come on. Not so old. You're my grandpa. Okay. Haha, uh -huh. bad joke. <laughs> Okay, my first operation system was also Windows 95, but yeah, from Microsoft, for those who didn't know that. No, I, really. <laughs> I just got a question. Microsoft was first. When did Apple appear? You're... Okay, wait a second. You're wrong. And In... wait another second. Uh, both about the same time. Oh, so they congregate with each other. Okay, there's a movie about it. It's actually a good movie called The Pirates of Silicon Valley. It was a TV movie. Okay, and the first operating system or from Microsoft was actually a not so good made 
port of an other operating system. They have bought this um, port to, to make a contract with IBM. So every IBM PC would use their DOS operating system. So yeah, and Apple was somewhere different and uh, there's a, it's totally complicated and it would take about two hours to talk about it, so I will not. The point is, Microsoft is owning parts of Apple. Really? To this day. To this day, yeah, because... Today, you mean? Uh, up to this day. Ah, okay. Back then in 1982, there is a famous Apple II commercial. Microsoft and Apple computers were working kind of together, but Microsoft made a few uh, dick moves, huh? Also not so friendly moves, uh huh? And in yeah. what kind of way do you mean? Okay, I haven't read about this in a long time, so I don't know every detail. Up to okay, this point. I think uh, yeah, the short conclusion of it: Apple made losses, and Microsoft bought uh, bite, bite, <laughs> bite. Uh, <laughs> no, um, bite. They purchased Wait. parts of Apple. Yeah, and this word I was searching for was <laughs> bought. I, I just got a pretty bad joke. I think you thought you said bite. So Microsoft bite a part of Apple. And that's why. And that's the reason why the Apple uh, market has a bite in it. <laughs> actually, this is a good idea. Maybe. Who knew? No, actually, this <clears throat> it's complicated because both... Apple and Microsoft have both stolen IDs from Xerox. Yeah, that, that's, Xerox is I today mean, that's totally true. Yeah, and this is totally too confused How to explain How would it otherwise right be possible that a software is able on a Mac and on a Windows computer if they don't work together? Uh, no, this is a different reason. Up to a certain point, Apple used in their Mac PC, iMac PCs, what I don't know. Yeah, um, they used, a, they had a special processor and other stuff and they had an own hardware. But at a certain point, they bought um, or purchased uh, or made contracts with Intel and used Intel processors. So Intel processors are used in normal PCs. So this is the reason be why you can you uh, install Mac OS on an Intel PC. Yeah, it's yeah, weird. Yeah, but the problem with Intel, okay, this will also take a few hours to explain, but okay. Okay, uh, try, try to ask. Maybe ah, I can put it short. I just wanted to say some facts, not a question. Okay. okay. If you buy an Intel processor, they if you go into your task manager and then see how much processor you have the intel processor have have the problem that they're always showing twice as much processor as what you actually have uh, it's like have you if you have an four and four core yeah exactly and four core processor it's actually uh, quad core quad, quad core. core it's actually core. Yeah. showing up as eight you know this isn't actually weird and there's an explanation for it what okay what <laughs> Okay, at this point, Intel have an 8-core processor, an octa-core processor. And no, not a joke. They released it uh, last month. And up to that point, there wasn't actually an 8-core processor, an octa-core. And so they used two threads per core. So it showed up with 8 cores, but you only have 4 cores. But for some software, it seems to be better, but I don't really know. And I actually don't kind of care about it. <laughs> That's right. Okay, I mean, okay, here comes the actual question that I wanted to ask. But if you don't have a question... Okay, go on. Oh, okay, I should. Um, what actually do you think is the difference between Windows 7 operation system 32 bits or Windows 7 operation system 64 bits? And what is better for you and why? For me personally, <laughs> I have to choose the 64 bit uh, version because for some software, it's really good. And there are only a few softwares um, 
programs that actually use the complete power of my PC. I have an eight core PC and uh, stop uh, showing I off. only no, just two... answer the question. <laughs> I'm <laughs> no. just kidding. Um, the point is if you have an Windows 7, uh, Windows 7, Windows 64, 64 bit edition, you can use the 32 bit software as well. So you have the pretty much if you have the 64 version, then you are on the safe side. Yes. Uh, there are a few programs that you cannot use on the 64 bit version of Windows 7 and some drivers, Windows 7. but that's yeah. You said Windows 7. Well, 7, 7, same, yeah, exactly. different language, same <laughs> stuff. Um, I think Windows 32 bits, well, maybe if you have a computer on work and you only use it for like writing some documents, then, then it's enough for 32 bits. But if you really want to play games and make Let's Plays, then 64 is the thing, I guess. Yeah, because when you're making Let's Plays, you want to render out the videos. And if you have the right software, you can make it a lot faster with the 64-bit version. If you have a 64-bit version of the software and your PC actually have strong enough hardware, like... You know, I don't want to yeah. show off, but uh, I got a 64-bit version. <laughs> I'm... I also have a 64-bit version, so I can talk about this. And the most games work on a 64-bit version of Windows 7. There are actually a few games, DOS games. Yeah, well, Windows 7 don't have a DOS part in it, so you need DOS box, but DOS box is really easy to use. So, And for other games, I only have three games. I couldn't start directly without a patch or something in Windows 7. But this is where you actually can use a virtual PC. There is actually software for it from Oracle Soft. I think it, it's called a virtual PC or virtual box or something like this, where you can run, for example, Windows 95 inside your Windows 7. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. Yes. Ah, I think it's pretty late now, but... For, I think for almost a half hour ago, I asked the question, what console would you buy? I forgot something. I would okay. actually, now I would always buy an Oculus Rift. Oh, really? Yeah, really. I Have you tried one? Yep. Uh, actually on the GameStop in Sweden, in Udvala, If I don't think you know where it is, but <clears throat> wait. It's pretty cool. I know the feeling and I really want to have that thing. It's like a horror game with that should be ah, the greatest thing in my life, I guess. I have tried one two last year on the Gamescom and I was in line for about 30 minutes or something like this. It's cool, but it depends on the price. If I will buy well... one when it costs 300 bucks, I'm like... Is it worth it for me personally? It's like, ah, this is just the thing that I really want to have. Even if it costs like, yeah, I don't know, 500 euro, I would buy it if I had enough money. Well, actually, it doesn't cost anything if you don't count the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> or if you see one now. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it's actually, I'm like, I wait until it got released. I will not order an SDK, a software development kit or pre-order kit. You can actually buy an Oculus Rift developer pack right now for about 300 bucks or something like this or 400. But it's not a finalized version. So if they make changes like better displays, like they have made in the different developer versions. Yeah, you miss out on yeah, this. But Think about the feeling when you have the Oculus Rift on you and you're playing a game like Outlast, I mean, the horror game. Man, I can't think of a cooler thing like that because I don't know if you know that, but in Outlast you have the function of a camcorder. You actually have the Oculus Rift on your head and then when you put your camcorder on it should look just, ah, it's just the thing that I want to have, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm not convinced completely up to this point. Uh, there are some people who are actually like, what, it's the next step in gaming. This will change gaming forever. 
and I'm like, yeah, it's like 3D in cinema. It has changed not so much. <laughs> well, no, there was with movies, there was a time where everything has to be in 3D, but now it's like, well, it's in 3D, it's good. If not, well, fine too. It's, I have a question to you that probably only you of us can answer. You are wearing glasses. How is it actually yes. to wear 3D glasses on your glasses? Isn't this pretty hard? Where is it irritating or I don't know. How is it? Okay. This is actually funny because uh, a friend of mine who's actually like, oh, I don't like to watch movies in 3D at cinema because of the glasses. If he don't has one normally. So, hmm. and I'm like, well, I don't care. The problem you only have a problem if your normal glasses are too big or well or too big yeah okay. because the you actually can buy a clip on attachment for your glasses with an polarized uh, filter on it so you well you don't cinema 3d glasses but i actually prefer the 3d glasses in the cinema because they actually fit fine over my glasses it's actually don't a problem for me personally if you have the problem of when your right eye or your left eye is looking in a little bit different direction, you might have problems with 3D cinema, but I don't have anything like this. I only have problems with 3D TVs with active 3D glasses where your shutter glasses where left and right eye is blacked out for a millisecond. Yeah, it's weird. I, I just got a crazy idea, which maybe could be possible in the future. Hmm. Okay. Um. You probably, if you don't wear glasses, you see everything blurred, right? Yes. Okay. What if they invite the that you can have lens in the shape of your eyes so you can see sharp everything, but the left lens is red and the right is blue, and that could make and in your shape of your eyes, so you can actually see the three D movie sharp uh, with two lenses. What do you think about that? Are you crazy? Why not? With red and blue glasses, you know why they don't use them anymore? Because people are getting sick of it. It's because color stuff and I would really uh, smash my head against the wall <laughs> to remove them. So, but how, nope. do, how does 3D even work? What? Is, okay. this, is this an optical illusion for your eyes or what is it? You mean in cinema or... Yeah, right, but for example, there, okay. there are actually those TVs where you actually don't need glasses. You see in 3D anyway. How does that work? Okay, it's a little bit like with the Nintendo 3DS where you can yeah, look in 3D without exactly. using How? glasses. Well, I need glasses, but it's a different story. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's actually funny when you think of uh, of it. No, but how no, does the that point work? Is there is a layer on top of the TV... It parts the picture, so your left eye is seeing the picture for the left eye and your right eye is seeing the picture for the right eye. And you can actually use the 3D TVs where you don't need glasses. There are different kinds of it. There is actually, I have seen it uh, one time, there is a 3D TV where you actually have two TV screens built into one TV uh, with a different depth. So, um, depth, depth. Yeah, I know what you mean. The, um, the first layer is in the foreground, the second layer is in the background. And they actually used it for 3D effects. And it's funny because it's just like an, a little bit like an, a pop-up book, if you know what <laughs> I mean. But did it work? This, these child uh, books where you actually unfold the book and there is um, you have one picture in the foreground one picture in the background <laughs> um, it's it works it's actually weird it's actually not confusing for the eyes but for some effects it's nice but it's not uh, the picture is not has a depth depth to it but it doesn't um, come out of the television the pop out effect um, like at some movies when the the spear of a gladiator is coming out of the screen, something like this. <laughs> you can do something like this with a screen like this. And a different kind, like the 3DS uses, yeah, is actually 
you have to exactly in the center of the picture to see it. So the best 3D stuff you can make up to this point is actually with the cinema glasses, where you actually are wearing glasses, but you actually, it's the smoothest 3D which you can have to this point. Mm. Or the Oculus Rift, but this is something really different. Actually funny, using the Oculus Rift with glasses is working fine. Yeah, I know you told me that. Even with strong glasses. <laughs> this is something, yeah. Um, <laughs> ah, I just feel like this is gonna, going to be a never-ending story and we have been recording for over an hour now. <laughs> Our goal was to actually try 10 minutes, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. Ah. And this is our first podcast. I don't even... Ta ta targas? Yes, Targas. Targas. Ne. Targas cast. Targas. targas cast. Where we targas. talk about random games and stuff. <laughs> no, about games and random stuff. What did I say? Uh, about random games and, and, uh, and stuff. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting tired. <laughs> good morning, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or good night. However. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should end our first podcast here. Yeah, I think so too. So, yo, I hope you like this one. And I hope you, you see further to see a next one in 100 years. Stay tuned. <laughs> Plus minus 100 years. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'll stop yeah, recording now. Bye. Bye.